guys, it's Mo, and uh, welcome to part two of my 12 books that I'm looking forward to getting to in 2020. So in this video, we're going to be talking about some nonfiction books that I'm hoping to get to this year. I really want to make nonfiction reading a larger part or continue just have it to be a regular part of my reading. And I have quite a few nonfiction titles on my shelves that I'm wanting to get through. So I'm going to share with you 12 of the ones that I am most excited to get to. The first one is The Lonely City by Olivia Lang, Adventures in the Art of Being Alone. This one is a book that's part biography, part memoir, and it's exploring loneliness through, I believe it said, through the lives of iconic artists. I've heard good things about this book and I've owned it for way too long now to not have read it, so this one will definitely be one we read in 2020. Next we have The Slave Ship, A Human History by Marcus Redeker. This book, like the title pretty much explains, is all about the slave ships that carried slaves from Africa across the Atlantic, and this happened over centuries, like hundreds of years this went on for, and it's really just exploring the history of that whole institution. This book seems like it could be really sad and hard-hitting, but one that talks about a lot of things in history that should be talked about and brought up and maybe not aren't as taught as much in school. I just hope that it's written in a way that's like really accessible and still makes it interesting. That's not like super dry but brings like the real emotion and story to the topic. Next we have She Wolves by Helen Castor. This is all about the women who ruled England before Elizabeth and there is a blurb on the front from Hilary Mantel who wrote Wolf Hall and uh, Bring Up the Bodies, which is a historical fiction series that I have been dying to get to. That was one a video side note um, that I was thinking of making was 12 of my um, historical fiction books that I was looking forward to, but I just wanted to keep it simple doing these three books. I don't want to set um, too many expectations for myself throughout the year. But anyway, back to this book. It's all about um, once uh, Edward VI dies um, in 1553, England for the first time would have a reigning queen. The question was who? So it's all about the four women who were very prominent during this time in history. It's Catherine of Aragon's daughter Mary, Anne Boleyn's daughter Elizabeth, Mary Queen of Scots, and Lady Jane Grey. As well as it's just talking about other women in history who have been very influential and so she terms them as she-wolves. Uh, this book just sounds all around so interesting and the author herself is a historian, a writer, and a broadcaster so I feel like she'll be able to bring their stories to life in a really interesting and human way that will keep my attention the whole time. I've been looking forward to this book for a long time. I don't know why I haven't gotten to it yet, just haven't had the time. Uh, next we have another nonfiction kind of centered around that same time period and it's called Versailles. I'm sorry the lighting is like doing a really weird things right now reflecting <laughs> off of me but um this one is written by Tony Sp Offerth, and this is a biography of a palace and Versailles is one place that I've always wanted to go visit and hopefully in the future I'll be able to go visit there but until then I will read this book and learn a little bit more about the history behind the palace. He really looks into the stories about the royals and the artists who lived there. Uh, this was back in 1789 and I just know it's just such a beautiful place and I want to know more about it. Next we have The Lost Art of Reading, Books in Resistance in a Troubled Time by David L. Ewan. So this book is um, written by this guy who is a former Los Angeles Times book critic and he is looking at reading, uh, he's looking at the importance of reading to include considerations of fake news, siloed information, and critical thinking as a key component of engaged citizenship and resistance. What made me interested in the book is it talks about in favor of slow reading for this distracted and troubled time and I can definitely agree with that. I feel like um, even when it comes to reading itself I feel like I need to slow down a little bit because sometimes when I read too fast I don't get as much out of what I'm reading. I don't know if this book is really going to touch on that but that's just something that I've noticed in myself. Then we have The Story of Art. Uh, this is book is by E.H. Gombrich and this is quite quite a big book. It's around 600 pages and it talks about the history of art way back from like cave drawings to up until I don't know how modern it gets to but I think at least around 
the first half of the 20th century and I think I've had this book for a while I think what's kind of put me off from reading it is I'm nervous it's going to be too much um like a textbook type of writing and I'm worried that it might be a little bit dry <laughs> and so hopefully that's not the case um, and I can really take away knowing a little bit more about art and the history of it and the world of art so we'll see. Next we have a, a gigantic book that I've mentioned before I didn't know if I wanted to read or not but I've been I don't know just lately I think I had maybe come across like an Instagram post of something someone had quoted from this book and it reignited my interest in reading it and that is A People's History of the United States from 1492 to 2001. This is another gigantic book. The size of this book has definitely scared me away from reading it. It's almost 700 pages but I just uh, I just really feel like I need to know more about the history of the United States. Like my I don't know if I failed myself or the public school system has failed me but I just don't really remember a lot of what I learned about the history of the United States in school and I know that there's always so much controversy about like what's taught in school and what actually has happened to the way things are written about so and things that are left out from history textbooks so I have faith in this book because I've heard good things about this book and uh, let's just hope that it really is good because I read um everything my te lies my teacher told me I think it was before and I liked that book but I wanted something more I just think that I I don't know I just didn't maybe it was just so much to, um history uh, I don't even know exactly what I'm trying to say but I guess I'll just sum it up as I have high hopes that this book will help me to fill in some of the gaps in my history knowledge for where I live. Next we have the Folio Society edition of a memoir of Jane Austen written by I believe her nephew. Um, the name of is J.E. Austen Lee. So this book, this is the cover and it came in this nice little slipcase here. I bought it secondhand so the slipcase is a little bit beat up but I don't mind too much. I plan on reading this mem uh, memoir of Jane Austen after I finish up reading her books. So I have Love and Friendship to read um, but then I think I also want to get to, I'm gonna maybe say this wrong, I think it's Sanditon. Sanditon? And I know that one wasn't like a finished work of hers, but it's still something that's out there. So I kind of want to read those two and then I will get to this memoir. I just need to get to Love and Friendship, but that's another huge uh, book that I just haven't gotten around to getting to. Next we have a gigantic book in the physical size of it, and that is For the Love of Books, Designing and Curating a Home Library by Thatcher Wine and Elizabeth Jane of Juniper Books. I keep saying Jane, Elizabeth Lane of Juniper Books. And this book is all about making and designing, curating your own home library, which is the most perfect book I could buy for myself, probably could be. Look at even the end papers are so pretty. There are books with their pages uh, splayed open. And yeah, this is just a really beautifully designed book. And I hope that the content of the book itself lives up to it, the outside look of the book. Then we have Good Kids, Bad City, A Story of Race and Wrongful Conviction in America by Kyle Swenson. Oh my gosh, this light is super bothering me. If I move over here, it won't be as bad. So this is the book that I was talking about before. This one is a kind of newer release book. So this book is written by an investigative journalist. His name is Kyle Swenson, the author, and he is writing the true story of one of the longest wrongful imprisonments in the United States to end in exoneration and looking at the social and political history of Cleveland and the city that convicted them. I really am interested in reading in this especially because I have been a little bit more interested in more learning more about the justice system and especially um, in how it relates to a lot of the wrongful convictions in America and the things that has to do with race. Next we have The Source of Self-Regard by Toni Morrison, Selected Essays, Speeches, and Meditations. This is one that I'm looking forward to reading. I have recently bought in a whole set of Toni Morrison's books that I wanted to read through. I'm debating back and forth if I want to read the set of books first and then read this or the other way around. But um, I have read most of the books in the set, so most of them are going to be rereads for me. So I'm kind of thinking I just want to go straight into this book first and then go back into reading her set of books. 
And lastly, we have The Fall of Empires from Glory to Ruin, an epic account of history's ancient civilizations by Cormac O'Brien. This book, um, I can't even remember when I bought it. I think I bought it back when I was working at the used bookstore I used to work at, like six years ago or whatever. And um, I really like the way that this book is set up. And I have read a little bit of the... I've read like the first chapter or two before, but for one reason or another, I haven't actually made it through reading this whole book. But it is written in a very accessible and easy to understand, not too heavy of a text way that really just um, gives a really good uh, history of ancient civilizations. So those are the top 12 nonfiction books that I'm hoping to get to in 2020. Give me some more recommendations though if there's other ones that you feel I should get to during this year and don't forget to subscribe and watch out for Friday I will be releasing the last video in this series of books that I'm going to be looking forward to reading in 2020 and you have to stay tuned until Friday to see what uh, whole genre and category that one's going to be, but I'm really excited for that one. I think you guys will really enjoy it too, so definitely be on the lookout, and I'll see you guys then. Bye!